All right, I'm redoing the 5-1 slope notes so that we have the entire chapter in a set of notes uh, video style that will be easy for everyone to access. All right, so these are the notes that we did in class. I just want to make sure that you're able to revisit some of these things. I graded the formative assessments, and they are kind of hit and miss on some of these things, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to revisit some of these concepts or some of these uh, details. All right, uh, slope. So we said that slope is defined as the steepness, and it's a lot of different things. It's uh, m, we, that's the letter we use all the time, and it's the change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. It's also the rise over the run, and it's also uh, when you calculate it, when you're given two points, you always subtract the y's on top over the x's, okay? You need to know that when a particular line, it looks a little steeper, this one here looks a little steeper, then it's going to, of course, have a bigger number because it makes sense. Bigger number, bigger slope. This one only has a slope of 2, let's say, so we'd only go up 2 over 1 for that one. Same thing negatively. If a line goes down like this, we would expect the slope to be negative. And if it's even more steep negatively, we expect the number to be a bigger number and have it be negative. That's the way it works, okay? Now, let's actually try a problem. So this is you know, what we need to be able to do. Find the slope of the line passing through each pair of points. So it's a good idea to label the points. It doesn't matter which one is first. It works either way. So we have x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. And again, we always do the same thing. We subtract y2 minus y1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So plugging it in, in this case, it would be 2 minus the 1. And then it would be 4 minus the 1. And so that's why we got, for this one, we got 1 over 3. And we can tell, if we were to plot the points, that we go up 1 and over 3. That's the rise over the run, which is the slope. Next problem, same thing, just different points. We label it accordingly, and then we take the y2 minus the y1. So we say negative 3 minus the 1. We get negative 4 on the top. On the bottom, it's 2 minus the negative 1. So we got to be kind of careful there. That's actually 2 plus 1, which is 3. So answer is negative 4 thirds. And if we were to plot those two points, we should definitely see that the line goes down. And we should, when we go from one point to the next, we should notice that we go down 4 and over 3 to get to the next point. So the slope is negative 4 thirds. Next one, we have a lot of negatives. Like this is about as ugly as you can get, you know? So you subtract your y's on top. So we go negative 2 minus a negative 5, and then we say negative 3 minus a 4, so that's negative 2 actually plus 5, so that's a 3 on top, and then negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7, so your slope is 3 over negative 7, or negative, se negative uh, 3 sevenths, or you know negative 3 on the top and a 7 on the bottom. They're all the same as long as you have one negative sign, and I didn't plot that one. All right, next thing that can happen is that you noticed on the formative, when we had the y's the same, we subtracted the y's, and we actually got a 0 on the top. Make sure we're clear. When we get a 0 on the top and we get a number on the bottom, the overall answer is 0. That's it. It's 0. So when we graph this, it is always going to be a horizontal line. This right here is called a horizontal line when it goes left and right like that. Some people remember it, it's like the horizon, I don't know. So horizon, so horizontal line, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that's going to always occur when the y's are the same. All right, zero slope. Now, when the x's are the same, what's going to happen is you're going to subtract the y's, 3 minus 1, 5 minus 5, we get 0 on the bottom. Now, 2 divided by 0 is not 0. 
It's undefined. That's really the only answer that's acceptable. Undefined. Okay. So I know it's very, very steep, but we say it's undefined when it's straight up and down. Can't divide by zero, so please just say undefined. All right. Now, there are some applications, lots of applications to slope, tons. Uh, you have to know that the slope is actually the rate of change of, of, the situa of the function, actually. So this is very messy, but let's say you had this guy who or a man who in 1950, we expect men to live 60 years, or we did in 1950. In the year 2010, we might expect them, if they're born in the year 2010, to live to be 70. So if we were to figure out the lifespan for a particular man, um, or the rate of change in the lifespan, what we would do is we would subtract the Ys, so we would say 70 minus 60, and then we would subtract the x's, so we would say 2010 minus 1950, and we'd figure out that the top number was 10 years and the bottom number was 60 years. So we have a rate of change of 10 over 60, or reduced 1 6, and we said that that means that every single year that we go here, we're increasing the lifespan of the man 1 6 of a year every single year. And that's the rate of change, that's the slope, because we're going up 10 years for every 60 years. So reduced, that's 1 6. Last problem is this kind of deal where we get to practice our solving equations that we did in class. So find the value of r so that the line actually passes through the given points and has the given slope. So we'll have an r in here somewhere, either an x or a y, it doesn't matter. But we have to give you the slope. So we'll set it up, we'll plug the slope in. So we know the slope is two, so that's why I have it on the left-hand side. It's probably a good idea to always write these as fractions. And then we're gonna subtract the y coordinates, so nine minus three over the x coordinates, so the difference of the x coordinates, so five minus r. And then we cross multiplied, and you can see the work, cross multiplied. Nine minus three is six. And then here we have 2 times 5 minus r. And so we distribute. So that's 10. And then minus 2r. And then we subtract 10. 6 minus 10 is negative 4. That equals negative 2r. And then divide by negative 2. And we get r equals 2. So we're saying that if we really did plot these points, now that we know that r is 2, it's actually a 2 there. So if we plotted 2, 3 right here, and we plotted 5, 9, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we plotted these points. We're saying that the slope would be 2 if we connected those two points now. So we'd go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and that's what, that's what we figured out. So that should help for 5, 1. Really kind of spend some time on that, make sure you get the details.